to real food. You know the kind that you taste real good. Don't want a dinner I can't pronounce. I want to order mine by the ounce. Whatever I got to taste for some real food. Warning, this video contains content some may find disturbing. Red meat. Why we should not eat this. Here are the top reasons why we should not eat red meat. We take a scientific look into red meat. Let's take a vegan food scientist look into red meat, why we should not eat this. Top journals that we will review in this video are cancers and red meat consumption, weight gain and red meat consumption, initiation of cancer cells and red meat link, nitrosamines within red meat and their destruction to our health. Lastly, we investigate whether red meat can be safe in its diet strategies. We will also take a short look at red meat industry's reaction to the new world cancer guidelines. Let's take a look at the impact of red and processed meat consumption in various types of cancers. An epidemiological study by the researchers in Spain looked at meat as the world's staple diet and how it impacts our health. The cholesterol and saturated fat intake present in animal meats are linked to reduced health. Eating meat can make us obese, diabetic, and have cardiovascular diseases and various types of cancers. This study looked at the serious link between red meats and colorectal cancers. The world meat consumption has increased and is set to rise even more. Even though we may think of all meat as red, white, the meat is really the only difference in the hemoglobin. Now mammals, we form the red meat, have a higher concentration of hemoglobin, whereas white-fleshed animals such as birds and fish contain less. Processed meats have steadily gained popularity due to its perceived value and convenience. The meta-analysis of studies suggests that a link between red meat consumption and obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, various cancers, and total mortality rate. Red meat and all cancer relations have been reported by many studies around the world, specifically red meat and its role in colorectal cancers. Also reported, we have esophagus cancers, gastric cancers, liver cancers, bladder cancers and as well known to promote tumors to specific organs such as the pancreas kidneys prostate breast lung and non-hodgkin's lymphoma now red meat is also linked to diabetes increased by 50 percent with each 50 gram dose of red meat per day consumed this study showed that the risk can be quite significant for managing and contracting diabetes. Now, red meat is also related to cardiovascular risk with total cholesterol in these animal products, as well as saturated fats that is linked to clogging our arteries and causing havoc. Speaking of causing havoc, this is a illustration of colon cancer. Now we're going to look at a human colon and I will show you that it might be a little disturbing for a few of you. So we're going to look at the actual polyps and the actual cancerous cells. Now you can see a ruler at the top of reference here for you and this is an actual human colon. Our next study, why we should eat red meat is weight gain. A study from the UK found that weight gain may be related to our red meat consumption. The high energy content and fat content makes it an easy target to gain weight, says the researchers. The study looked at participants and then five years later looked at the meat in all forms, red, white, and processed. They have statistically significant data showing that weight gain, despite total calories eaten, exercise, and other variables. Now, in both men and women, normal and overweight people, as well as smokers, whoever you are, 
if you're eating red meat, bottom line is you're going to be gaining weight. Now, the key variable in this gaining weight equation is the energy density of meat compared to other foods, such as plants or grains. The protein content can show increased satiety, hence the feeling of fullness. But on a long-term study, we showed that overall added weight for these people, even adjusting for their BMI, your exercise, your education level, total calories eaten for your day if you're a smoker or not, and a misleading data. Despite all of these factors, red meat means added weight. Next article, we look at how meat has the natural ability to turn into carcinogens. Study from an International Life Science Institute looked at the formation and human risk of carcinogenic heterocyclic amines formed from a natural precursors in meat. Looking at beef and fish samples, they found that meat has a combination of amino acids, sugars, and creatine. Together, when cooked, produces these cancerous agents. This figure shows the mutagenic properties from heating sugar and amino acids with the proteins together. The chemical bonds change into a mutagen or carcinogen. Now, pan residues contain equivalent or greater amounts of cancerous heterocyclic amines. Processed meats are subject to these cancerous agents as they are heat processed. This table shows the steep increase in pan residue and cancerous agents with the increase of temperatures. Now beware of barbecued meats here, as they are particularly susceptible to these mutagenic chemical processes. When we are talking about DNA formation and the initiation of cancers, we are talking about DNA adducts. These adducts are precancerous segments of the DNA bound to a cancerous cell, leading into a cancerous state. Red meat was found in multiple studies to form these adducts. Studies of over 30 cancers found with the intake of meats and red meats especially. Here's a table showing the different kinds of cancer including breast, bladder, colon, rectum, lung, kidney, prostate, to name a few. The main goal here is to empower the people to reduce cancer worldwide. This is the way of reducing carcinogenic heterocyclic amines from our diet. There is a strong association between over 30 different kinds of cancers and well-done meat consumption. What about processed meats? This study shows the dangers of processed meats linked to cancer via nitrosamines. Nitrates and nitrates are common chemical agents that are added as an antioxidant in processed meats. Researchers from Belgium looked at processed meats in that produce N nitrosamine carcinogens originating from physically adding nitrates as a preservative, smoking as a processing method such as barbecue and aging of the proteins and lipids such as in aging meats here as a famous ham seller. Understanding that the most volatile N-nitrosamines are strong mutagens and the intake can lead to organ-specific tumors. This table shows the food products that contain amine precursors of cancerous origins. Cooked ham and dry fermented sausages have been studied multiple times by researchers. In conclusion, the researchers show that N-nitrosamines formed by the secondary amines in these meat products are cancerous. These nitrosating amines can come in gaseous forms, meat form, and as a preserving agent. The meat that is eaten is important. Also, how well it is cooked and how it is processed. Is there any smoking or preservative agent to it? But altogether, these factors combined makes it deadly to consider putting red meat on your plate due to its nitrite containing compound. In the last study, let's look at is red meat really safe? Researchers looked at red meat in colon cancer. Meat especially red meat has been directly caused to create multiple cancers. As we've seen before, the ability to make meat safer or can we just change our diets completely? 
These researchers looked at this as a review and published in the Journal of Meat Science. Consumption of red meat is related to an increase in colorectal cancer. No colorectal cancer and its determinants on mortality and death has shown to have a very strong link. The more meat is consumed, such as in the traditional American diet, the more incidences of colorectal cancer. This table shows multiple factors related to colorectal cancer risk. Take note of abdominal fatness, body fatness, and red meat intake. As red meat contains excess fat, excess protein, excess heme iron, and excess heat, induced mutagens such as nitrosamine agents as we've seen in the last study. Fatty diets lead to obesity and can increase the pressure in developing diabetes. Excess protein is an issue with your digestive system and is toxic. Animal research performed on rats found multiple studies indicating this carcinogenesis. Diets high in animal meat which are high in fat and high in protein isolated components are both carcinogenic in their rate. This illustration shows the catalytic effect of heme iron and N nitrosation and perioxidation through red meat consumption. The red meat derived heme iron both catalyzes to nitrosation and fat peroxidation. The end products through this pathway explain that red and cured meats have a promotional effect on colorectal cancer. There is a suggestion pointing to plants as a health boosting agent using polyphenols to sort of battle against this fat peroxidation and nitrosation from the meats that you eat. So there is an inhibition effect that you can get from polyphenols. However, you're, m you're mostly just putting out the fire, but why put fire in your body at all? So try to avoid all red meats, all processed meats, all cured meats, as we know that they are carcinogenic with or without plants. In summary, we look at red meat and its various health concerns. The top journals that we reviewed in this video are Cancers and Meat Consumption, Weight Gain and Meat Consumption, Initiation of Cancer Cells and Red Meat Link, Nitrosamines within Red Meat and Their Destruction to Our Health. Lastly, we investigated whether red meat can be safe and its dietary strategies. What are the new plant-based industries doing about this? Let's check out a food company working to change the way we see ground beef, hamburgers, and other beloved red meat products. Meet Impossible Foods and their take on the burger. That was Impossible Foods. We can also find beef alternatives such as crumbles, steak strips, whole cuts, and seitan versions that taste great with no added risk to your health. Let's check out what Dr. Gregor from NutritionFacts.org has to say about the beef industry and their response to scientific evidence regarding red meat and cancer link. What was the meat industry's response to these leading cancer charities' recommendation to stop eating processed meat, like bacon, ham, hot dog, sausage, and lunch meat, now considered a class 1 carcinogen? Uh, they acknowledge that the most recent international cancer prevention guidelines now urge people to avoid processed meat. It's evident that such a statement represents a clear and present danger for the meat industry, reads one response in the journal Meat Science. 
Processed meat, they say, is a social necessity. How could anyone live without bologna? The challenge for the meat industry is to find a way to maintain the consumption of these convenience products while somehow not damaging public health. We're still not sure what it is in processed meat that's so carcinogenic, but the most probable educated guess for explaining the damaging effect of processed meats involve heme compounds, along with the nitrosamine and free radical formation, resulting ultimately in carcinogenic DNA damage. To reduce nitrosamines, they could remove the nitrites, something that the industry has been considering for decades because of the long-known toxic effects they cause. The industry adds them to keep the meat pink. There are evidently other coloring additives available. Nevertheless, it's going to be hard to get their industry to change in view of the positive effects of these substances as preservatives and desirable flavor and red color developing ingredients. No one wants green eggs and ham. It's like salt reduction in meat products. They'd like to, but one of the biggest barriers to salt replacement within the meat industry is cost, as salt is one of the cheapest food ingredients available. Now, there's a number of taste enhancers they can inject into the meat that can help compensate for the salt reduction, but some leave a bitter aftertaste. So they can also inject a patented bitter-blocking chemical that can prevent taste nerve stimulation at the same time the first of what may become a stream of products that are produced due to the convergence of food technology and biotech. Or they could always try adding non-meat materials to the meat. You could add fiber or resistant starch from beans that have protective effects against cancer. I mean, after all, in the United States dietary fiber is under-consumed by most adults, indicating that fiber fortification in meat products could have health benefits failing to note, of course, that their products are one of the reasons the American diet is so deficient in fiber in the first place. The industry is all in favor of reformulating their products to cause less cancer, but obviously any such optimization has to achieve a healthier product without affecting the hedonic aspects. It's important to realize that nutritional and technological quality in the meat industry are inversely related. An improvement in one will lead to a deterioration of the other. Uh, they know the consumption of lard is not the best thing in the world, and heart disease being our number one killer and all. However, those downsides are in sharp contrast to their technological qualities that make them indispensable in the manufacture of meat products. Otherwise, you just don't get the same lard consistency. The pig's fat just doesn't get hard enough and as a result, a fatty smear upon cutting or slicing can be observed on the cutting surface of the knife. So yeah, less heart disease, but you got to weigh the pros and cons. Thanks, Dr. Greger, for weighing the pros and cons for us about the red meat industry. Thanks, guys, for watching my video. Check out my other content at the Vegan Food Scientist YouTube channel, my website at theveganfoodscientist.com, and social media platforms. Have a great day, and remember, keep it vegan, y'all.